Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to episode three of Late Nights in Bed with Oshi Reads. And I'm your host, Oshale of Oshi Reads. And tonight's topic is quite an interesting one. Tonight, I wanted to talk about should non Black authors write Black characters? And I thought about making it broader and making it, you know, should authors, should white authors write characters of color or should non, I, I just really hate that POC word. So should non um, people, hmm. I don't know. It's hard to say it without using the POC word, which I hate. I have to come up with a different word. But until I do, should non-POC authors write POC characters, I guess, is a more succinct way to put it. But I want to narrow it down and talk about Black characters specifically because I can comfortably speak to that because I am Black and I'm a part of the Black community. And I don't feel comfortable speaking for other communities because I'm not a part of their com community. But this is an interesting conversation that I have often with my inner circle. And we talk about the ramifications of white authors essentially writing black characters and, you know, the consequences of that and the expectations within that. And on the flip side, there are a lot of white authors who are constantly being accused of not having diverse characters in their work and not writing diversely. And an author that comes to mind is Sarah J. Mass. Now, I really, really, really enjoy Sarah J. Mass's books or Moss, however you say her last name. I really enjoy her books. I've not finished either Akatar or um, TOG, like I haven't finished either series and I do plan on doing a complete reread of both so I can complete them. But of what I've read so far, I just love the stories. I got completely wrapped up in them and completely invested in everything that was going on with the characters and the worlds respectively of each different series. And I know she just started a new series as well. So she is always being accused of not writing diversely enough and not having, you know, characters of color in her work. And she's constantly just being harangued for just this transgression and what people feel is so horrible. And it's always confused me because I would rather have a white author not write diverse, quote unquote, diverse characters, whether they be racially diverse or in other ways, if they're not comfortable with that and if they're not familiar with that, because then they're not going to make mistakes and they're not going to put harmful stereotypes into their work. And, you know, they're not going to fall into this trap of not doing enough research or not looking into things enough and misrepresenting things and uh, portraying things inaccurately. So I would rather have a white author who just writes white characters and is comfortable doing so and doesn't want to stray outside of the box or outside of their comfort zone. I don't understand why that is a problem. I feel like in this new faux um, wake culture that awake <laughs> woke culture that we have going on, people are constantly outraged and are constantly looking for new ways to be outraged. And unfortunately, a lot of white authors have fallen under this, you know, new um, witch hunt, apparently, of them being dragged by their chinny chin chins for not writing diverse characters, which is, honestly, we can talk about how diverse is not just skin tone and is not just race and culture. And yet, that is the way that we tend to use it. So I'm going to stop saying diverse and I'm just going to start saying black characters. So these authors are literally being hunted down on these internet streets and 
people are tweeting them and subtweeting them and saying all these things and saying, don't buy their books. And I just think it's insane. It doesn't make any sense to me. If someone doesn't feel comfortable writing about someone that is not of their own culture or race, why should they have to step outside of their comfort zone to do so? Why should they have to, you know, potentially risk really like putting their foot in it and really making a grave mistake and just doing something that could truly be harmful if that's not something that they're comfortable with? Why can't they just write in their lane and be and that be okay for people? It's, I mean, it's, it's not a hill to die on and it just doesn't make any sense because we're trying to get you to read black authors that write black characters, but you would rather focus on the white authors who do not write black characters. Make it make sense. So that's the flip side of the argument is authors just not being comfortable doing it. And yet they're still being accused of being racist, of being closed-minded, of being prejudiced, of being bland. I mean, just so many things. If they're writing not being good enough because they don't include black characters, um, yeah, it's insane. Also, I mean, I feel like people don't take into account the actual craft of writing. As a writer, you know that when you come up with a story, for a lot of us, the story kind of just comes to you. The story idea comes to you, the characters come to you, and they start communicating with you. It sounds crazy, but for a lot of us writers, if you're a writer, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. And the story tells itself to you, and you are just there to witness and record it down. Um, of course, you know, you can be more involved than that. There are plot holes that need to be filled. There are decisions that need to be made. And a lot of things gets cut, a lot of things get cut in revisions. A lot of things get changed in edits. This is true. It's not like, you know, some woo woo, like fantastical shit going on. Like, yes, you're actually working and writing a story and crafting it. But the initial start, the initial idea, the initial spark, a lot of times just comes to you and you see the characters and you see the world and you see the conflict and you see the story and it just unfolds. And you try to capture it and mold it into the best version of itself, right? And I can't speak for all writers, but for myself, a lot of times characters already come fully formed. Like sometimes I'll have to really search for a name and I'll have to go maybe through some name websites and see what sticks. But a lot of times the character comes to me and I know what they look like and I know what they sound like and I know just instinctively who they are and what they're going to be fighting for and what they represent and what they're about. And that comes with their appearance. That comes with their skin tone, their hair texture, their features, just, you know, their body type and shape and just everything. Like I just see it in my mind. I just see it. And it's like that for a lot of writers and people. So don't take into account the actual craft of writing and what it takes to create a story and what that looks like in that process. And they just assume that these authors just don't want to write black characters and they're just prejudiced and they just want to write this white, all white world in this white bubble. Why don't we focus on authors who are writing black characters who are black, who can accurately represent the vast dimensions of blackness, the vast variety and, you know, the differences and the nuances within Black culture across the diaspora. Why aren't we supporting those authors? Why aren't we reading their books? Why aren't we uplifting them so that we can have more Black authors come onto the market, writing more Black stories that are even more rich and tell even more sides of the story of Blackness, so to speak. I, instead, we're focusing on the white authors who are not writing Black who are not writing diversely. And we are asking the question, should white authors write black characters? Now, here's what I think. I think it is perfectly fine for white authors to write whatever type of character they want, black, Asian, Hispanic, 
although Hispanic is not a race, they can write native, they can write whatever type of character, you know, whatever they look like, their cultural background, their skin tone, their experiences. But if that is not your culture and that is not your experience, then you're going to have to do the work, okay? You can't just depend on stereotypes and watch a bunch of movies and go off of that. No, you need to do the research. You need to read. You need to find out what these cultures are like, what these people are like, their community, what it's like, what they eat, where they go. And you have to focus in. What type of Black person are you writing about? Is it a Black American? Is it a Black person on the continent of Africa? You know, what have they been through? Who are they? What are, what are their influences? Is it colonization? Are they descendant of the uh, chattel slavery? What's going on with this character? So if you're a white author wanting to write a black character, you have to do your research. You have to really look into it so you're not perpetuating harmful stereotypes so that you're not you know, writing things that are simply coming from a very narrow lens and a lens that could potentially possibly be, you know, a lens of white supremacy. You know, you don't want to, there are certain nuances that come when you really start to do the research and you start to look into the history of Black people in whatever um, place you're writing about, even if it's a fantasy world. I would even suggest if you're writing about a fantasy world, you need to in, you know, kind of doing the background on the, on your character when you're really looking into it, you need to pick a historical place that that Black person is from, a place that actually really exists, and do history on that place, and then build your fantasy world from there. Because as a Black person reading books, when white characters try to portray us sometimes, even in fantasy, even in science fiction, I pick up sometimes on certain microaggressions and certain things that are just problematic. You know, I see a lot of the white savior complex a lot when, you know, white authors are writing black characters. I see harmful stereotypes being depicted a lot. So these are things that a black person can pick up on who's reading your books that a white person or someone of another, um, another race may not be able to see, you know, an Asian person may not be able to see it. A native person may not be able to see it. Someone who is, you know, Hispanic in culture may not be able to, to pin it down. But as Black people across the diaspora, we see it. We notice it. And it's very off-putting when you're trying to read a book and get lost in a story to come across these things, to come across these microaggressions, to come across problematic statements, to come across characters that read like walking stereotypes and caricatures that are perpetuating really harmful beliefs about Black people. It's not good. So if you're not going to do the research, if you're not going to look into what you're really doing and what you're trying to say with that character... You know, it's kind of like when you watch a movie, as a black person, whenever you watch a scary movie <laughs> and there's a black character, you know they're going to die within the first 20 minutes of the movie. 20 minutes might be generous, uh, maybe the, within the first five, 10 minutes. And that's why what Jordan Peele started to do with horror was so horror, horror horror was so revolutionary and so amazing and why he has so much support from the black community and obviously from other people who just love his films because for the first time i got to go to a movie a scary movie and see black people as the main characters and they made it all the way to the end and most of them lived what does no one understand that before Jordan Peele did this, did this, this, it just didn't exist? Like it wasn't, it wasn't a thing. We, I mean, we used to joke about it when we were kids. Like whenever we would go see a scary movie or like a thriller or anything like that, unless you knew it was like one of the big, big, like famous guys, right? If the, if the center of the movie, the lead was like Denzel Washington, then obviously he's not going to die. Um, Morgan Freeman, you know, there were certain leads that were like, oh yeah, okay, this is their movie. It's centered around them. They're going to make it to the end, right? And granted, they didn't really do scary movies. They did more like thrillers. But you're watching a scary movie. 
And after the opening credits, you see the black character. They're running just like everyone else. They're scared. You know they're going to die. You just know it. You don't even get to get attached to that character. You don't. You don't. You're just like, okay. They're not going to be here long. <laughs> so, like, you can't think that you can just watch a whole bunch of films and sort of gather, you know, what this black character is going to be like from these films that you're watching. That's not adequate research, okay? Because Hollywood films are filled with harmful stereotypes about Black people, are filled with so many microaggressions, are filled with so much negativity, like the Black person being the villain and, you know, being so angry all the time, never having to have a hero's journey, um, and being the type of villain that's irredeemable and nobody can see their side, and nobody really understands what's going on with them. Need I say more, people? So, yes, please don't just depend on Hollywood. Don't depend on movies. Don't depend on even books to some extent. Look into actual research. Go into actual, you know, people who have written about the Black experience historians and history texts and um, psychology texts and anthropological texts. Like, do legit real research, please, I beg of you. Those are my thoughts. I think it gets very restrictive and gets very, you know, animal farm when you're like, oh, white authors should never write black characters or Asian characters or native characters. They should only ever write white characters because then they won't mess it up. Just do the research because it can be flipped. So then does that mean that black people should never write white characters, should never write native characters or Asian characters or, or um, yeah, I think I covered the basis of the major races or biracial characters, or mixed characters. It's just like, <laughs> you know, where do you draw the line? Because you can't say one thing and not hold it for another group, you know? So that's how I feel. Those are my thoughts. I think that the debate is a little silly at this point. I think we need to focus on Black authors who are writing Black characters and give them more plat. Um, more of a platform and more of a spotlight so that they can get their work out there and they can get their recognition. And I think we need to hold white white author, <laughs> white authors accountable so that, you know, if they are writing, you know, characters of a different race from them, that we see that they're doing the work and they're really researching and they're making sure that their representations of this character are not harmful. Um, to that community and are not putting harmful, dangerous ideas and stereotypes out there about that community. So those are just my thoughts. And um, also just leave white authors who only want to write white characters alone. Like this, I don't understand it. I just, it just doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me. I don't, to me, it's the same as an author that only wants to write romance. And people are like, oh my God, why do you only ever write romance? You know, like mystery is really good too. You know, have you ever thought about writing nonfiction? Have you ever considered maybe possibly writing a dystopian? You know, you're always writing like romance and like contemporary romance. There's other stuff that you could be writing. Like, what? <laughs> it just doesn't even make any sense. It's so stupid. <sighs> You know, and the romance author like, well, you know, this is what I know and this is what I'm comfortable with and this is what I want to do and this is my passion and this is this is how my stories come to me is romances and this is what I want to do and stay in my lane. And people are like, no, no, we're going to drag you for only ever writing romance. Doesn't that sound dumb? That's how y'all be sounding. Just saying. That's all. I promise that these late nights in bed with Oshi Reads videos are not always going to be an hour long. I'm trying to find the sweet spot in terms of how long they're going to be. So yes, uh, please remember to give this video a like if you liked it. Uh, please subscribe if this is your first time here. I'd love to have you as part of the Oshi Reads family. And please let me know 
your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. How do you feel about this topic? Should white authors write black characters or no? Should white authors write characters of any other race or ethnicity outside of their own? And do you agree with me that I? it's like a really stupid argument that they shouldn't? Um, or that it's a, well, not necessarily a stupid argument that they shouldn't. I think that there's, you know, actually a pretty good argument for that. But I think it's a stupid argument that people are angry at white authors for only writing white characters. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. But yes, let me know how you feel in the comments. And we are rounding out on 22 minutes here. And I will catch y'all in the next late nights in bed with Oshi Reads. And I promise I won't be as distracted next time. I will have figured out my angles and my viewfinder and all that good stuff. And yes, I will catch y'all soon. Good night. Mwah. Bye. Good night, y'all.